this week's news. Deadly attacks on mosques and churches in Nigeria. The Adventist World Church votes no on women's ordination. And is this the most beautiful church in the world? This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. Christians were once again deliberately targeted during a week of bombings and shootings in Nigeria, in which about 300 people were killed. According to AP, the deadliest attacks were on two mosques where more than 200 worshippers were killed. At one of the mosques, a visiting Muslim cleric was speaking about the peaceful coexistence of religions. The spate of violence also saw at least 15 Christians killed during bombing and burning attacks on more than 30 churches and 300 Christian homes. As Australia and other countries tighten their asylum seeker policies, the UN's World Food Programme reports that its Middle East refugee programme needs $139 million to continue. Advocacy organisation Open Doors USA says that nearly 300,000 Syrian and Iraqi Christians are among the refugees facing food shortages. According to Christian Post, Open Doors has been providing some help to people fleeing the civil conflicts, but they're also struggling with funding. Open Doors CEO David Curry says he fears that the Christian refugees will be the last to receive help. In what's being described as one of the longest and most passionate speeches of his pontificate, Pope Francis has called for radical changes to the global economic order. Speaking in Bolivia at an event hosted by left-wing president Evo Morales, Pope Francis was scathing of greedy economic systems that leave the indigenous and poor disenfranchised and the environment devastated. He also mourned the death and suffering of Christians in the Middle East and elsewhere, calling the persecution a form of genocide. According to Religion News, Pope Francis has been criticised for his anti-capitalist statements before. This time, eyebrows were raised at the gift he received from Morales, a crucifix in the shape of a hammer and sickle. Last week, delegates representing the Seventh-day Adventist Church from around the world voted no to a proposal that would have allowed regional leaders to fully ordain women pastors in their territories. While the 58% majority vote was clear, a significant number of delegates left the general conference meetings disappointed at the result. After the vote, re-elected President Ted Wilson pled with regional church leaders to work together in unity and refrain from moving independently on the issue. After the vote, the North American and South Pacific divisions released separate statements expressing their continued commitment to women in ministry. In both territories, women pastors are active but are commissioned rather than ordained. Adventist leaders in the Netherlands, however, stated their plans to continue to fully ordain women pastors, a policy change introduced before the general conference meetings. The other significant changes considered at the general conference meetings were an update of the Adventist Church's official summary of its doctrinal beliefs. Church leaders were quick to point out that while they were recommending changes to the language of the 28 fundamental beliefs, the teachings had not changed. While many of the edits were simply intended to update the wording of the official statements, some of the changes were aimed at making the church's official stance on controversial topics clearer. Delegates voted through changes that uphold the belief in a literal six-day creation the definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman, and the doctrine of the Trinity. There's one easily available commercial product that's responsible for six million premature deaths per year, tobacco. But the World Health Organization says that although raising tobacco taxes is a proven way to reduce smoking levels, 80% of the world's countries have no tobacco taxes at all. The WHO is encouraging governments to consider how they could reduce the burden on their health systems by implementing tobacco taxes of at least 75%, as well as increasing their revenue. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, which has promoted a tobacco-free lifestyle for 150 years, generally supports any measure that will reduce smoking levels. I think there's a lot to, that developing countries can learn from these experiences. 
raising the tax is one of the best ways in which uh, developing countries can go in controlling the use of tobacco. Christian organisations were among the vocal critics after a Perth art centre installed a sprinkler system designed to deter homeless people from sleeping near the building. According to WA Today, the St Vincent de Paul Society said the decision to spray homeless people beggars belief. Christian campaign organisation Common Grace organised a petition to have the scheme stopped. After the negative publicity, the Western Australian government said it would no longer use the system. The incident has drawn attention to the lack of funding for beds in homeless shelters. Because of the kindness of Australian supporters, one little girl from Papua New Guinea is looking at a much brighter future. Anitha's eyesight is so poor she would be considered legally blind in Australia. In a developing country like Papua New Guinea, she struggles to get the support she needs. But after charity organisation Operation Food for Life partnered with Sydney ophthalmology practice Personal Eyes, Anitha got the chance to travel to Australia with her carer to have her health needs thoroughly assessed. Anitha now has new glasses and her carers will be linked to health professionals back in Port Moresby who can make sure she gets the help she needs. New Zealander Barry Cox is one of those lucky people who's had the opportunity to combine two of their passions. In this case, it's God and trees with spectacular results. It took Barry just four years to transplant the trees to their current location and train them into the shape of a unique and beautiful tree church. After an enthusiastic response from family and friends, Barry has opened his church and gardens to the public, including a labyrinth. The seven-layer design mimics a walk around the walls of Jericho. That's it for this week's news. For the full half hour of Record in Focus, including lifestyle and health tips, political commentary and inspirational interviews, you can visit our website, record.net.au. All the video segments are there. Thank you for your company. God bless and I'll see you next time. <laughs>